oh, now this guy, whenever he appears, you just kind of want to, you know, punch him in the face because he's such a dickhead, but, but he is cute. <laughs> Hello everyone, it's Luli and today I'm going to be going through my top 5 Otome Game side characters who unfortunately are not a love interest but they're pretty and attractive and they sit there and they torment you <laughs> because they're not available. But before I start, if you like visual novels, if you like Otome Games and if you just like fangirling over 2D guys then you come to the right place because I upload once, sometimes twice a week and stream regularly. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and, you know, click whatever, that subscribe button and bell button and you will not regret it. Also note that although I would not consider any of what I include in this video spoilers, I'm aware that what you consider spoilers and what I consider spoilers may not quite align, so if you're even a little bit sensitive and you don't even want to know what's on the website, then I would swiftly move on. But anyway, let me start. So, in fifth place is the character Leo from Pio Fiore. Now, Pio Fiore, as many of you probably know, is an Otome game based in the Mafia world where you've got multiple factions all like fighting and then the main character Lily is like in the middle of it. Leo is one of the like, I don't know, he's like one of the guys in the Fadutsore. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. Basically the one that Dante is in, the main one. And uh, often he's found to be looking after Lily, making sure, you know, she's there and not running away and kind of keeping an eye on her. But he's a really nice, cutesy, adorable character that just wants to do everything he can to help. But the reason why I think he would be a fun love interest is that he's always... He was always kind of there, and the idea of like Dante, like, okay, imagine this situation. You've got Dante who's like, I like Lily. But then you've got like Leo who ends up liking Lily because of the amount of time they spend together. But his boss, Dante, is really into her. So, oh, how bittersweet. Do you see where I'm coming from? Like, that is like the cutest kind of situation. So, yeah, if he was a love interest, that would have been cute. Especially, like, imagine, yeah, imagine him ending up liking Lily and just not being able to tell her because, of course, Dante, his boss, yeah, like, that is such a bittersweet situation. So, no. Leo is in fifth place. Fourth place is Kaina from Olympia Soiree. Olympia Soiree is a game set in this island where these different colours make you know are sort of set in certain ranks. It's kind of a very classist society. If you're on the primary colours, you're like at the top, whereas if you're all mixed and like stuff, then you're at the bottom. So it's 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 this really I don't know, it's got a bit of a grim vibe about it, even though it's like super colourful and really pretty. And uh Kaina is um a character that was of I think yellow. Yeah. Yeah, was of uh the colour of yellow, which is you know, top one. Um, but due to the fact, well, for various reasons I'm not going to talk about because that's a spoiler, he ends up in what's called the Yomi, which is like the below ground kind of city place where all those who did bad things or are the wrong colour end up going down. And um, yeah, so you find him there. And uh, he's, he's just really... Like on first look, he looks like a love interest. He's really pretty, he's cute, he, he has like some of an adorable personality. And I understand why he's not a love interest, but like, I don't know, it, why put so much effort in to make a character look so cute when he's not even an option, if you know what I mean? <laughs> like I understand why he's not a love interest, but then why can't you just make him look unattractive? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's all. Maybe that's asking a lot, but anyway, um, moving on. Third place is, and this is where things got a little bit difficult because I had to like really think about who I wanted. Third place is Adam from Buster Fellows. Buster Fellows is this game where you've got a bunch of guys who are actually kind of doing dodgy bad things, but all for the you know greater good so you've got a lawyer who defends people that you know are in trouble and they've clearly committed a crime but he manages to make it you know look like 
in the court uh, that it was totally for good reason or he's innocent or whatever. Um, so you've got characters like that, a transformation artist, another one's a hacker, and they all work together. Um, and it's a really cute in the sense that you see them, you know, it's, it's sort of heartwarming and wholesome in that you see the interactions. It's like watching a family. And it kind of reminds me a little bit, like the attitude kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Robin Hood almost, like the whole what's justice thing. But Adam is this character that, so Kevita is the main character, she ends up being dragged into this, but she originally was a writer, a journalist, and Adam was one of her like childhood best friends alongside uh, this other girl. Um, and you know it's 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 kind of sweet that you see adam and you kind of almost think that he must be he must be one of a secret ally or something but no like don't get me wrong he gets his little story but it's not like the other routes where there's a romance between kota and adam and it just seems like such a missed opportunity because adam is like the perfect childhood friend trope and you can tell that, well, at least I felt like he liked Teuta, and I feel like that would have been a really cute route in that, you know, especially given he's really handsome, he's, like, popular, he's popular with the girls, and for obvious reasons, because he's, like, a newscaster, I think, um, so he's on the news, and, like, he's good-looking, he's from a rich family, I don't know, it's, all the, all the good things are there, I guess, so he's popular with women, and, um, you know, Teuta, is of course oblivious as all main characters um and uh i don't know i feel like adam liked her and i think it would have been cute to see that childhood friend route i know not it's not for everyone but i really like childhood roots especially when the character's like scared of telling the main character that he likes her because oh what if it breaks the friendship like that bittersweet mm, vibe is just <laughs> that makes sense so yeah Adam was definitely a missed opportunity, um, and who knows, you may, we may get a tiny bonus story or something in the sequel, but I bet you it won't be enough for me. Um, so yeah, he needed to be mentioned. Second place, and this one's actually being like, because I actually posted on Twitter what, you know, side characters people would have liked as love interest, and this one kept on bobbing up, and it's kind of one of mine too, is Saiki from Colin Malice. Um, now, when I was talking to people, I honestly thought that's because I haven't played the Colin Malice fan disc. I thought that he would be, or I had heard he was, he had like a root in Colin Malice Unlimited, the fan disc. But I have been told that that really isn't much of a root per se. It's kind of more like a bonus. And so I'm kind of like, I'm a bit disappointed actually because. In Colin Malice, Saiki was always, like, he had my attention all the time. If, if there was, like, no, oh, you know, he was basically my favourite character in the whole game, like, right from the start, because looks-wise, he's my type, the interactions between Ichika and him were cute. Oh, um, bearing in mind, Colin Malice is about this main character who is a policewoman. One day she gets kidnapped and a collar is placed on her by the terrorist group that's been terrorizing uh, that area called Adonis and she kind of has to figure out a way to take it off because it has poison that can kill her immediately and um, through each route you kind of explore different members of Adonis but Saiki is this colleague that she's constantly spending time with and it's really I really like that you don't really get as many roots of like colleagues type of things. So I think Saiki would have been a really nice, you know, in-depth route if they had like given it, uh, you know, given him a chance. <laughs> and I'm kind of sad that even the unlimited one isn't going to be a full on route from what people have told me. So yeah, no, he definitely, definitely needs a route. I, I like the whole colleague thing and he seems genuinely supportive of Ichika and yeah. <laughs> now, number one, and this is probably going to come as a surprise to many, but it's actually Conrad from Even If Tempest. Even If Tempest is a game about this main character who can wind, like, go back in time and she ends up you know, being sucked into these witch trials where you have to, they all have different rules, but ultimately you need to figure out who the murderer was and, um, it's a really like angsty game actually it's very very 
gory and blood and yeah it's it's definitely not for those who like happy games but um in this game there's a character called conrad which is the eldest prince um of the king and actually throughout the whole game the king it's always mentioned that the king has three sons lucian which is one of the love interests and conrad are always at it so conrad's eldest lucian is the youngest i think but he looks most like the king so he's kind of favored um but conrad is the eldest and he's a massive jerk in every single way you can think of but he's cute <laughs> and the thing is with like villain characters because he is kind of portrayed as a villain all the time there's always a bit more to them so like i can imagine a route with him being really interesting that in that you can probably see the difficulties he faces as being like you know the the eldest prince and then you know watching lucian get a bit more attention and like his this this desire and ambition to um become king and like all of this stuff i think would be really interesting to see from the main character's perspective if he ends up liking her because i don't even know if he has the ability to like a girl or a guy or whatever because like you don't really i don't know he just seems like so obsessed with his ambition of becoming king that i just can't imagine him liking a anyone really so that's why it'd be really interesting if he did end up like liking um the main character because it'd be like seeing a different side of him you know <laughs> so come on voltage fan this please or season two anything <laughs> conrad would be nice but yeah those were my top five a couple of honorable mentions one that kept on coming up was um epirogi uh from cafe enchante he is the himbo I don't even know what he is, but he appears in Ilzru. It's been a long time since I've played at Cafe Enchante, so I really can't remember. I just remember he was this big, muscly, himbo guy that I remember wishing was a, you know, love interest because he... Have you seen those muscles? Like, <laughs> I don't even care about the personality anymore. It's such a tough game, like, as long as the visual is nice, you know? <laughs> But yeah, he kept on going up, and I understand. The himbo is fun, and um, yeah, he looks cute, so... <laughs> um, another one that also came up was Morioka. Uh, he's like, almost like a Dilf character from um, Color Malice. Uh, he, I think that's that's the charm, the fact that he's a bit of a, a, a Dilf. So like, people are like, oh, the older guy, because you know, you don't get many older guys in Otome games. So like, he, he was very much one that constantly got uh, mentioned. Uh, another one that I saw is Tsukuyomi. Tsukuyomi is from Olympia, sorry. He's almost like a father figure really of Olympia. Um, but I guess because he's so mysterious and the way he like is, I don't know, I totally see it. I wish Tsukuyomi was a love interest too. Um, he's just full of mystery, full of secrets almost. And I just, he doesn't feel very human-like either. He always feels godly or unworldly. So that's always a charm as well. And then last but not least is Oliver from Pio Fiore. Oliver is of the, which was it, Visconti faction. So the one with Gil in it and he is this cool and collected lawyer oh man yeah he definitely i can imagine him being like having this cool demeanor very strict ruthless this stereotypical lawyer but then you have the deadest side where he's actually like when he likes someone he kind of always i don't know i can imagine him being like kent from amnesia where he's like really cool but then he has like a lot it's like awkwardness potentially when he likes someone i don't know I just like, I know it's not real, but I like imagining these different scenarios in my head and, and like be way too smiley as you can see on my face right now. But it's fun, you know, I'm sure you guys understand. Um, but yeah, and that kind of ends, um, oh, oh, one more. And this one is a little bit controversial, so shall we say, is Kanan from Olympia Soiree. Oh, now this guy, whenever he appears, you just kind of want to you know, punch him in the face because he's such a dickhead, but, but he is cute. <laughs> it's true though, like, have you seen him? And I don't know, I feel like, although he's a massive a-hole, when you look into, like, his backstory and stuff, you can kind of, 
you know, it's it, at least there's a good, not good, you can never have a good reason, but there is at least a logical reason as to why he behaves the way he does. And I feel like if he was a love interest, it'd be really interesting to see his backstory and the way he thinks and all of that. I just think, I feel like it would be a really good route, even if he is an annoying little, yeah. But yeah, that's why it's a controversial one. I would certainly find a route from him interesting, but who knows? Anyway, that kind of concludes my top five as well as honourable mentions of uh, Tomei game characters that are, you know, I wish and many other people clearly wish were love interests. So the question of the video is, are there any side characters that you would really like as a dateable character in an Atomi game? And you know what? You can even talk about characters that aren't in games at all that I'm kind of intrigued to hear about. <laughs> But anyway, as is always the case, thank you very much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. And hopefully I'll see you in another one of my videos or streams. Bye!